Well, thank you, Stephen Whitlock, for joining us today. You are a chief, chief strategist for Boeing in their IT department. You do internet security specifically in Seattle, Washington. I retired about three years ago. Okay. So I'm no longer at Boeing. Um, I've turned that over to whoever's doing that now. I am continuing to do some cybersecurity volunteer work for standards organizations and for the U.S. federal government. Wonderful. And on the side, you are also an avid reader of Latter-day Saint scholarship and involved in this community in quite a large way. So in what ways were you involved in preparing this Hunibly observed volume? So I was probably the first editor going through the different chapters as we collected them and just reading them through for look and feel and content and trying not to change anything to change an author's style. And then I photographed most of the photos in there from the archives and, and then we collected them from various, uh, the Nibley family and others, and I did most of the editing on the photos. Wow. What was your favorite part about working with those photographs or the process of curating them, I guess? It's probably not all that exciting, <laughs> um, but trying to take an old photograph and bring it out so you can see the, the light and dark shadows. I've done a lot of that with family history, personal family history photos. Uh. So we wanted to have nice, readable photos where you could see the people in them. And some of the sources weren't good, some were great. And that was striking for me as I was flipping through uh, the volume and the PDF, just seeing those beautiful images that I'd never seen of Hugh Nibley before. I had, because I'm a younger person, I'd always only seen him as an old man, and so to see his young childhood photos or him as a young man who was quite handsome, I might add, was, was really refreshing to just kind of see this as a human life, not just a scholar I had heard about growing up. I pushed for the cover photo because I've always seen him as an old man as well. And I yeah. wanted something that would show the young, dynamic, passionate Hugh Nibley. And that photo captures it. One of the things I like about Hugh Nibley's writings is you can get caught up in your day-to-day -day life and, and then you go back and read a lot of his writings and he brings you back to the basics, essentially to the plan of salvation and why we're here on earth. Our general authorities do that as well and other scholars, but Hugh Nibley for me had a unique way of writing where he didn't talk down to you. It was almost like a conversation with him where he was really excited about something he had just learned and he wanted to share. Which is remarkable for someone as brilliant as he is. He could very easily be pedantic, but instead he was very approachable. I find that, and I, I know that some people are afraid to read his writings because they're assuming they can't, but they're not hard to read, most of them. He, he, he does have a broad vocabulary, and you might have to look things up, but most things you can tell by context. So you had an interesting experience where you came, uh, where you came in contact with a manuscript of Hugh Nibley's. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience? I had never met you. <laughs> so I went in and walked up to him, and he, and he said, if you must know, I'm really busy. And I said, well, I just want you to authenticate this manuscript. And he looked at it, and he started bouncing up and down on the balls of his feet. He got tremendously excited, which made me excited. And he said, this is my New Testament class. I thought these notes were lost forever. And he said it was from the 50s. About five years later, it came out as volume 15, the um, Apostles and Bishops in Early Christianity. And so I was pretty excited that it got published, and I didn't know if it came from mine or, or if I found out much later from Jack Welch that in helping, I think he was helping Nibley move his stuff out uh, near the end of Hugh's life, that, that they had found the original and Jack shepherded it through publication. It may be a little rougher around the edges than some of the other volumes in the collected works, but it's really good material. I'm glad that it finally got published. Wow, that really is such a gem that we have that. What a cool experience. So last question, how has Hugh Nibley influenced your life? I think that sometimes when I get caught up in other things and then go read some of his material, it helps ground me a little bit. It's reinforced my career interest to be to just stay be a generalist. Um, I like that approach. If I could, I would read everything that I could. Um, I can't, and I can't read the languages he read. But I would say a, a, a corrective on perspective of, of life. Yeah, 
I really, that's profound, and I really appreciate uh, all the perspectives I've been hearing from you and Shirley Ricks and Jack Welch about all the different ways Hugh Nibley was not just a good scholar, but uh, a wonderful human being, and I appreciate uh, your perspectives on that, too. It's been a great project, and I should say that the scriptures are the real thing that grounds you, but Hugh Nibley points you back to the scriptures and to Christ. 100%. Thank you for joining us. This has uh, been a great experience, and re I really have appreciated learning more about Hugh Nibley, so thank you. Thank you.